Hi, here we are. <laughs> Another part of Into the Sideways World, Ross Welford. Um, so we left Willa. She was with new, or not new, she was with boy Alex. And they were just at um, Happy Land Caravan Park, weren't they? Just as they, um, in the in the Sideways World. And we left her. And Alex murmured at her soul, at her shoulder. Different, isn't it? And we start with chapter 30. You ready? Here we go. Different? I'm almost speechless. Where the freezing cracked open air pool should be, there is a covered spa with mini palm trees visible through the huge glass dome. I glimpse a warm looking pool with a waterfall. Everywhere outside trees and bushes have replaced the cheap plastic fencing. And instead of tatty caravans and tired little lodges with leaky roofs, there are cosy looking wooden cabins, all of their doors painted different colours. It's like I'm gazing at an artist's impression of what a perfect holiday park is and, as we walk to the entrance it just gets better a sign above a small shack says eggy meggy's brilliant breakfasts and some families are sitting in the morning sunshine laughing and eating at striped tables everywhere there are beds of big spring daisies and yellow marigolds and blue well small blue flowers poor old maudie does her best but this is gardening on a whole different level Jungle Joe's Gymtastic looks amazing. Coloured rope swings, monkey bars, bright pink mini trampolines and a curving water slide down the back of a massive crocodile. I love it and keep snapping away, trying not to draw attention to myself. This must be what happens with investment, I think. Perhaps it's all down to sun seasons. I look out for the sun seasons eye-catching logo of a bright yellow sun, but I can't spot it. Instead, at the entrance is a huge sign. Welcome to Roger Shafto's Heritage Holiday Park. Great Grandad Roger, I say, pointing out the smiling picture of him looking like the man from the KFC logo, and I take another photo. Oh yeah, he's a character all right, says Alex. He lives in Florida. He's 115, still takes the SP everywhere. He was here just last month. And then we're out on the main road, and once again I see the brightly covered, coloured free ride tricycles, a jumbled up rainbow of painted steel, and the flying cicars with everyone smiling and waving at one another. It's all so wonderful, and I take more pictures and bits of video, making sure I get one looking under the cicars as they float only a few centimetres off the ground. The people in it grin at me before they move off with that slight swishing noise and a trail of clear liquid droplets comes from a little opening at the back where petrol cars have an exhaust pipe. I hadn't noticed last time but there's a channel, a little gutter at the side of the road where the liquid trickles. I point to it and ask Alex, what is coming from the back of the cars? He looks at me like I'm daft. Water, obviously. He sees my awestruck face and says, please don't tell me you still use petrol. Petrol? Yeah, yeah, we do. This is awful. It's like I'm being judged. It's not my fault. We do have electric cars as well. They're very popular. Where does your electricity come from? We're walking towards the corner opposite the cows where I agreed to meet Manny and I feel almost embarrassed. Most of it comes from, um, you know, fossil fuels and a growing portion of renewable sources. I find I'm remembering stuff told to us at school. Alex thinks this over then says, Wow, I guess we were wrong. Wrong how? I want to know this, but I'm also a bit distracted looking around for Manny and worried that he's not here. We did this in modern history class. Back in the 1970s, I think, we spotted massive problems with pollution from Earth energy. Coal and oil, yeah? Not only that, but they were making the world warm up, so, you know, we stopped and fixed it. Perhaps we were wrong. Perhaps we didn't need to. Where's your friend, by the way? No, I say. No, you were right. The world is heating up. I mean, ours is, but... Go back, you stopped and fixed it, just like that. Hey, calm down. No, it wasn't just like that. I don't think but I wasn't there, were I? I think it took a while. Years, in fact. But, you know, we turned things round. No problem of human density is beyond human beings, as the great man said. Which great man? I say, a little distracted. I keep looking up and down the road, fascinated by the vehicles. John F. Kennedy, of course, says Alex. I blink. Just hearing the name of the dead president sends a tiny thrill through me as though something from my world is connecting with this world. But I pull my attention back to Alex. So, what is the secret then? How do these engines work? What powers everything? Alex smiles a little bit sheepishly. 
You'll have to ask Jamal. He's our engineering teacher. I think it's mainly nuclear energy. Oh, we have that. But isn't it a bit risky? I guess everything's risky if you don't do it properly. The vehicles aren't nuclear, though. Most of them use an HCD engine. That stands for, um... Hypercharging dynamo, that's it. A tiny effort from the driver and passengers is converted into something and then something else happens with oxygen and hydrogen and something else which becomes expelled water. That's it, I'm afraid. Got a grade 15 last year. That's not good, you know. I'm better at physics than chemistry. But how does it float then? I'm trying not to sound annoyed, but I wish Alex was a little bit cleverer, especially when he just shrugs in response to my question. How how can you not know, I say. What do you mean? I can't know everything. I thought I was doing pretty well with HCD engines. You don't know how that, that mobility telephone thing works, do you? And besides, if your pal isn't here very soon, we're going to be late for school. I've been so absorbed in taking pictures and listening to Alex that I'd almost completely forgotten about Manny. Now, though, we're at the corner where he'd agreed to meet. I get my first tingling of unease. He wouldn't forget, would he? No, of course not. Will you go to school without me? No, to that as well. I'm pacing up and down the pavement, looking at every Sikara and free ride with a desperate hope that it contains Manny. None of them do, of course. Ordinarily, I'd send him a text or even call him, and I find myself cursing both Manny for not turning up in this wonderful world that doesn't have instant communication. How do they cope? How can a world come into existence with flying cards and some sort of non-polluting energy that I don't even understand and cogs and no wars and not have mobile phones or computers even? You're right, Mina. I mean, Willa, says Alex with genuine concern. I can't wait any longer, you know. One more late this term and I get a detention. I can't leave without him, Alex. What if he's in danger? What if, what if he didn't arrive? You've got to help me. I feel sick with worry. Where is Manny? Alex thinks for a moment, pulling his chin in that familiar way. Then he says, you know what? I reckon that one detention is definitely worth it to spend a morning with a sister I never knew I had from another dimension in space-time. Is that what I am? I smile weakly. Thanks, bro. I kind of like detention anyway. It's fine, I say to Alex, trying to keep the rising panic from my voice. He's probably just gone to school by himself or bunked off. This is Manny Weaver, after all. Bunking off school comes totally naturally to him. Alex shoots me a glance and, just like my sister, he can tell that this is more to convince myself, but kindly doesn't point it out. Instead, he says, I'm sure you're right. If you made it through your cave, what's it, then there's no reason that he didn't as well. Everything's going to be mass groovy. Just hearing those words make me giggle a bit, despite feeling a bit very uneasy. But still, perhaps we should just check, just, you know, to be cert. Yes, it'll be, um, mass groovy, to be cert. I'm nervous says Alex and I pedal the last few minutes to Manny's home. In fact, it's only the last moment that I remember to film stuff, especially the houses on the seafront, which are normally the off-white colour of rain clouds, and are now painted in pastel shades each contrasting with the one next door. Not even the road is black. Instead, the surface is a burnt red colour with markings in pale blue. Meanwhile, I'm running through all the things that might have happened to Manny. From that, I start thinking of all the things that might happen to me, and I end up wondering whether I should have come back after all. Why did I trust Manny of all people? Manny, the kid from the children's home with no family and nothing to lose. Manny with the spooky, hypnotic green eyes who can charm a cog to have its tummy tickled. Manny who... Where is this place? Yes, Willa, says Alex from behind me. We turn off the main road and cycle through rows of pale, plink, pale pink and lavender blue houses. And even though the streets are laid out exactly as I expect, it's a while before I realise why I'm having difficulty recognising them. And it's not just the colours. It's because there are no cars. Think about it. Pretty much every street in any town is lined on one or both sides with parked cars, but here there are hardly any vehicles at all, and it makes the streets look different. Four or five per street, maybe. Mainly cars, not floating, but resting on the ground on the dull metallic charging plates. I see a man come out of his house and stand next to one of them. He takes something from his pocket, just like taking out a car key, and he points it at the cigar whose lights flash. Then it rises up slowly to sort of car height. The man gets in it and it hisses off. Outside Manny's home, I look up for the sign for once that everything is pretty much the same. Winston Churchill House, Northumberland County Council, Residential Unit 44. 
I ring the doorbell while Alex waits on the pavement until a tall, friendly-looking lady with white hair and big glasses comes down the hallway looking through the glass. Hello, Hinny, she says warmly. What can I do for you? Hinny? I've never heard anyone say that other than in old Geordie songs that Nanny know Nana knows. Um, is, is Manny here? Manny Weaver? Um, Emmanuel? No, Hinny, he isn't. I feel as though my stomach has hit the ground. The lady lifts her glasses and looks under that at me. Are you Willa? She says. Yes, yes I am. I see. You better come in. I look back nervously at Alex, who smiles and gets off his free ride to come in with me. This is my brother, I say, the words feeling a bit strange in my mouth. We follow her into the clean-smelling hallway with pale yellow walls and an orange carpet. I'm Bonnie, by the way. I'm the house auntie. She sees me looking quizzical. Well, it sounds better than senior domestic social worker, doesn't it? Shouldn't you be at school, by the way? Her manner sounds strangely giggly and excited, with a little smile flickering on her face. I've got permission to come and check, I say, surprising myself with how fluently and effortlessly I lied. She doesn't seem at all suspicious of my easy deception. Aha, uh -huh, typical. I telephoned an hour ago and spoke to the receptionist. The message must not have been passed on. Then she giggles again. What on earth is going on? I thought he didn't have telephones, I blurt out without thinking. Straight away, I wish I hadn't. That is, um, you idiot Willa. I needn't have worried. Bonnie smiles. What, here at Churchill House? We have two. One in my office and one right there. She sounds very proud of the fact and points behind me where there is a box attached to the wall. Resting across the top is one of the curved handle things they call a receiver. There's a little round wheel with numbers on it below. Oh yes, we're quite up to date here, Willa. Now, she gives us another laugh. Emmanuel Weaver. Alex and I sit in her small office and Bonnie sits at her desk, her hands clasped in her lap. Emmanuel left early this morning, as was planned. She sees my shocked face and says, Oh, I didn't tell you. I'm surprised he'd been looking forward to this for a long time. Mind you, he's not quite been himself for a little while. In fact... We've been rather worried about him. I dare say it was the excitement. He's been so looking forward to today. Looking forward to what? I say nervously about... Nervous about what I'm about to find out. Well, I shouldn't really be telling anyone this. It's all been such a secret, you see. Confidentiality and all that. Honestly, it's like she's going to burst. Anyway, we found Emmanuel's mother. Ready? for chapter 32.